Welcome to the Edible Valley video series. Uh, we're here today with John, as always. Uh, and, and Darren, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, and today, John's going to cook a little something for you. Um, we're focusing on some local ingredients today. We're thinking, you know, here we are at the tail end of winter. Uh, spring is right around the corner when everything comes, starts coming out in abundance. But uh, what can we do with limited fresh local ingredients right now? Um, so John and I went to the market and picked up a few things and John's got a three uh, course menu for you today. Yeah, so I, I basically, I mean, we can't get everything, right? but we did our best. Um, so basically I'm looking at a lot of proteins right now. Yeah. So definitely, you know, I went down to the market there and I ended up talking to Island Bison. Right. And um, I was thinking nice and wintry, you know, let's get some nice stewing meat. So I thought yeah. we'd do a nice little sort of a, a bison stew. Great. <clears throat> Keeping it pretty simple. And then uh, I moved over a couple tables and, and ran into Sarah Pontissima Pasta. And I thought, perfect. She had some nice, beautiful paprika and oregano pasta. So I thought, let's mar marry those two together. Oh, yeah. Good. And we'll, we'll come up with something like that. Great. Um, also, I was looking at, you know, nice way to start a meal is with a nice, simple salad. And Tree right. Island yogurt was there, of course. So I thought, you know, let's get some yogurt. Oh, do a nice yogurt dressing. Little yogurt dressings to start off. Perfect. And then pretty much... Not a big thing in the market, but chocolate. <laughs> Finish off with a little chocolate mousse and thought that would be Can't a fun go wrong way to go. Finishing any meal with and a little chocolate. get some nice, nice local eggs. So great. Okay. Well, that's, that's great. Working. That's, you're showcasing pretty much everything that was available uh, at the market the other day. Yeah. And so I just wanted to hit it up and sort of see how things were there. Great. Uh, so we're going to start off. We got our beautiful bison. Yeah, look at that. Nice chunk. Bison's such a great meat. So flavorful. Yeah. Uh, it is. You have to cook it slow. It is very uh, lean. Right. Yeah, I know. I think some people shy away from it thinking that it might be too gamey, but it's not. It's got a great, it's just got great flavor. Oh, exactly. Yeah, but we do have to watch out with that, without any um, inherent fat. So yeah, bison can be a little on the lean, is, is on the lean side. So right. you have to really watch sucking all the moisture out of it because right. it doesn't have that extra fat to sort of, so it come, sometimes can come off as a little bit dry. Right. Uh, that's why I love stewing it because you're basically adding moisture to it and you're right. cooking it in the moisture so you're not going to lose that beautiful flavor. So. Right, yeah, you don't have to worry about it becoming dry. Exactly. So to start off, I always just like to, I always like to sear my meats off. Right. And this is, I just like to get a little bit of color on it. It just adds that extra flavor. And of yeah, course, you get a little texture too, which yeah. is great. So I'm just going to put our bison sure. in here. Whew. Thank you. And I'm going to give it a seasoning right here. Nice. You want to pass me those tongs there. I think that's a great, great tool to keep my hands clean. <laughs> anyway, so I just want to get a nice coating of salt and pepper over here. Right. Now, definitely, if you're doing, depending on what you're doing with it, I mean, this is a great time to put some of your herbs. Right. And some of your spices on it to just let it sear in. But we're going to right. keep this simple. We got the oregano in the, in the pasta, so I want to keep it pretty simple. And I'm going to start right. off just by, okay. once this pan's nice and hot, just doing a little test there. Just a little test, just making sure we got a nice hot pan. And I don't want to just throw all the meat one big clump in there. You right. want to sort of put it in and, and let it give it a chance to just actually get some of that color. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you put it all in there as a big cluster, you're, you're not getting the same coverage. And you're getting the moisture. The moisture right. content's going to sit in there, and it's not going to let you to get that nice golden brown color. Right. Now, some stewing methods you want to do that. If you're doing a fricassee yeah. or blanquette, where you're not trying to get that color out of the meat, you're just going for the flavor. But I with bison, I like to get a little color, right? Add a little body. Wow, you're just it's getting, looking great already. Just trying to get that nice high heat on it. So what else? Uh, I mean. What else can we do with bison? Uh, I, I mean, uh, a lot of people aren't aware of it as being a viable um, local meat, or, or I guess some people aren't going to have it as a local meat, but... Um, um, I love, I, I think it's fun. I mean, I, I love a bison burger. It's great. Just yeah. nice ground meat. That's a, yeah. you know, a simple one for at home. Just mix a few simple herbs and spices in there. That was like a little bit of roasted garlic in my... Right. So people can pretty much use it wherever, as a sub, substitute it anywhere where you call it, anything's calling for lean meat, lean. Pretty much. I mean, yeah. I, I really compare it a lot to, to beef. Right. Uh, I mean, this, it's a lot healthier. Yeah. 
I'm gonna keep this actually. Okay. But it's, um, you know, you, the only problem is, is you, you will find that it isn't as tender. You don't have the marbling in it. Right. I mean, bison's a much more muscular animal than a cow, right. so it finds that it's, if you really blast that heat, things really tighten up quick on it. So. Right, okay. So that's why if you're grilling, a, the steak, steaks are beautiful, but you want to have your, your temperature down a little bit. And you want to serve it definitely like a medium really? rare. Yeah, was, yeah. All right, there we go. I don't know if we can see that, but it's starting to get that nice color on oh, there. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. There we go. Promise I wouldn't light the place on fire today. So. <laughs> So right there we're going to do is just get that nice golden color over all the meat. And after we get to that point, we're going to throw in our vegetables and get that same golden color out of it. Put it in some stock and just let it reduce and let it slow cook. You right. Know? It's going to take a couple hours. This is a great, great thing if you've got a nice slow cooker at home. You can just saute this up in the morning. Yeah. Throw it in your slow cooker at night. I know. And just let it go. I, uh, I, I go through waves of, uh, and by waves I don't mean seasonally, I mean I'll go through a couple of years of not using my slow cooker and a couple of years of using it. And uh, same thing, I, I always forget that. Like just a little preparation, either just before bed or first thing in the morning, and then I'm out the door and come back and you can have a great meal. Yeah. And this is perfect, you're right, this is perfect meat for it. Mm -hmm. And so it's one thing too with your slow cooker too is, you know, when you're pulling it out, just sometimes you don't want to just serve it straight out because sometimes right. you get a bit of fat come up. So you want to bring it back together. Yeah. Something that hasn't been stirred all day, it's just sort of set there. Everything sort of separates. So I find right. just bringing it back together and tightening it, whether you hit it with a bit of cornstarch or any sort of starch, a slurry of some sort. Right. Just bring it back to life. The trick is not to play with the meat all the time, too. <laughs> Definitely browns better when it just gets a chance to sit there. Absolutely. All right, so I think we're getting some nice color out of this meat now. Looks beautiful. Great. So I'm just gonna pull it out of the pan. Now you see we got all this beautiful flavor in the pan itself. Oh, so. I know. You definitely have to take advantage of that. You gotta make use of that. Oh yeah. So, and this is what I hate is when people don't actually take advantage of this. Oh, I know. It's the best part. <laughs> So we're going to take that back and we've got all our nice diced vegetables. Perfect. We're just going to yeah. do a little okay, bit a little of onion, mirepoix. a little mirepoix. So I'm just keeping it pretty simple with a little onion, a little carrot and celery. Perfect. And definitely so, uh, got yeah, more than I need, so I'll pass it on. that don't know, mirepoix, sort of an essential building block of all your soups, stews, stocks. Um, just the holy trinity of vegetables that are great flavor base and texture base for most sauces, soups, and stocks. Yeah, so we just want to add that extra body and flavor, and we're going to cook that right down. Um, so while we're waiting for that, I got some garlic. Now I've peeled the garlic, I'm just going to give it a good little smash. Good. And the purpose of that? Just easy, it flattens it out, yeah. and then when you go into dicing it, all right, it's not rolling away from not you. Not rolling all over the place. So you got a nice, Perfect. even dice. Just like that. Right. right. I also find when you're doing a small dice like this, you notice that this, this side of the knife moves a lot closer. Right. It's a lot tighter. So if, while you're doing your dices, you're just flipping over. Yep. And just walking the knife over and back and forth. Great. Yeah. Have a bit of a shaky table. <laughs> Uh, that's what happens when you film a cooking show in a recording studio. That's right. <laughs> so anyways, we're going to let these just go down. We want to get them nice and translucent. It'll take a few minutes. Yeah. Again, uh, I like how you're leaving it be. A lot of people think that anything, as soon as it hits the pan, it has to be constantly stirred and maintained. But no, you want that uh, to sit for a little bit, then give it a stir, sit for a little bit. Yeah. That's how you're going to get that color. Just let it work in there. Yeah. You know, if it starts browning up a bit, Right. That's what you want. Yeah. Right? You're looking for that flavor. Right. I'm just going to add some fresh thyme here, too. I'll just oh, pick my a favorite few leaves. Herb. This is nice. Fresh absolutely. thyme on anything to me is, uh, yeah. makes it. So it's nice, simple. It's going to take a few minutes just to cook down. Wonderful. 
probably kept these veggies a little bigger than than you could, but as I'm looking at nice long cooking time, and I wanted to see a little bit of the right, little bit of presentation in the. Yeah, it smells wonderful. It's getting there. It's still burning. <laughs> so yeah, it was uh, you got down to the market with me this weekend too, which was quite nice, eh? Yeah, yeah. I, I've got to admit, I haven't been to the market in quite a while. Um, again, it's one of, one of those things. I don't mentally. I just don't associate it with winter. Uh, winter to me is is um, a lot of. Uh, foraging in my local supermarket rather than the local market. And I forget that. I mean, we went there. We saw some great, great things. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously saw the bison. Uh, had, what else did we have there? Um, there was the great, the cheese, local cheese. There's local dairy. There's fresh fish, fresh sausages. I wouldn't say fresh an, fish, frozen fish, but. Fresh frozen, <laughs> yes. But I mean, there's an abundance there. Uh, yeah. And I just had to remind myself of that. So uh, that'll be back in my Saturday routine or Wednesday routine as it is here. I, I find for myself it's becoming a bit of a social event for myself. I'll go down there and I'll just run into people and just catch up on what's going on around town yeah. and, and who's doing what. And yeah, and even just talking to um, local producers, uh, yeah. food producers, just, um, yeah, just chatting it up about what's going on and you find you end up gleaning so much information mm -hmm. find out what's coming up get ideas of new things new crops that are going to be growing i don't know i find uh it's great it's great i i, I love it I, as soon as spring hits i'm always there yeah and of course the farmers are all trying to find out what you want too yeah. so that's always the the nice one is going back and forth like what, what what vegetables do you want me to grow for you this year right yeah and i'm always like well whatever you grow i want to yeah. see what i can do with so just gonna Perfect. add the tomatoes in here for a little. Right. Bit. You're doing those last because you want the you don't want them to break down completely, right? Yeah, I do, but I, do, I want the vegetables to cook down, and they're gonna they're gonna coat everything. I also add a little bit more moisture to lift some of the right product off there. So this should all break down really well. Now. Let's throw our, get a little bit of stock juice in there. Nice. Thank you. Pass that over. Well, that's just looking fantastic. <clears throat> throw our fresh thyme in there. This is a great time just to hit a little, a little seasoning in there just to Get all those vegetables. Perfect. <clears throat> now, normally I might hit this with a bife, uh, beef stock or a bison stock, which would right. be even, even better. Uh, but I'm going a little lighter today, and we're just going to do a little chicken stock in here. Okay. And I'm just going to let it cook down. There's also a few other ways you could do this. Like a lot of times with these meats, you could actually just dust them in a bit of flour right. and sear them off. And That's, then a, yeah. a bit of thickening to it. My, uh, my mom and my grandmother, whenever they would make stew when I was little, definitely, they always dusted it in flour first. And yeah, when we were at that point where we were pulling the brown off the bottom of the pan, um, it's, it's going to thicken that stock right away. So I'm going to grab the chicken stock from you there. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to put just enough Just to cover. Ooh. And now we're gonna let that go. Great. Let it simmer. Perfect. And we'll come back and look at it in, in a little while. Sure. How about what what do you figure uh, we're gonna give it about? You know what? A good two hours. Yeah. Yeah, a good okay. good hour to two hours just to let it simmer. Okay, well stew. we'll see you back then. Okay, so the stew is stewing. Stewing is going on. Yeah. So let's uh, start with our first course, and we're just going to put together a simple yogurt vinaigrette. Great. Okay. So I'm super easy. Um, just going to combine all my ingredients. You want to pass me a whisk? We've got Absolutely. some nice Tree Island yogurt. Wonderful. So it's the Greek style, so it's a little thicker. Great. Which I love using. I'll just eat it by itself. And they've got <laughs> so many wonderful flavors down there. I should keep the spoon. You're welcome to. Perfect. Gonna add a little touch of garlic. Sure. 
So uh, yeah, why don't we run through the basics of vinaigrettes? I mean, vinaigrettes are so key in everything. Um, in you find them everywhere. They're ubiquitous. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're really just a couple of simple ingredients. And basically, you're adding acid. Right. And you're. I mean, it's great, and they're so versatile, vinaigrettes, because they clean the palate. Yeah. And they sort of open up your mouth and right. sort of let some of those other flavors come in. Like they're always. It's always such a fabulous flavor. So in here, I just have a little champagne vinegar yeah. and just a touch of um, uh, cider vinegar. Cider vinegar, So right. just the two. I'm just mixing them out there. Okay. And I'm just sort of thinning it out. Yeah. And now, so now we got this nice thin mm -hmm. little vinaigrette. We've kept it pretty simple. Of course, we do a little bit of salt. Right. Vinaigrettes are characterized by obviously their vinegar, but then you also need um, a little bit of an oil or a fat. A fat to thicken yeah. them, yeah, or to give them the body. Right. right. Like that's what it is, and that's what's going to stick to your, to your product. Right. And, and then the yogurt dressing's great because there's not much of an emulsification happening other right. than your, the yogurt holds itself, so it'll s spread apart the oil. Right. Whereas in if you're doing an oil-based vinaigrette. You know, it's trying to force itself. Right, we need an emulsifier, something that's going to bond that oil to that vinegar. Yeah. Which is where the mustard comes into mustard play. Mustard comes in, and mustard is just a beautiful binder. Right. And the one thing I am missing, Darren, I wonder if you could grab for me, is just a little touch of honey. Sure. Just off, off stage. Sure. It should be on the top. Perfect. And so, yeah, just the last ingredient is just going to add just a little bit of honey. Right. Just to sweeten it up. And that's just going to sweeten it up. Mmm. Perfect. It smells fantastic here. And we'll just take the end of my knife because I don't have a spoon right now. <laughs> don't try this at home. That's right. Mmm. That's got quite a tasty little thing. I think it needs just a touch of salt. Now, definitely, you can definitely with yogurt. A nice, fresh, light herb. Dill is right. beautiful. Doesn't have a strong characteristic. Right. Definitely one of my, one fun to add to this one. But I'm just gonna keep this pretty simple. So it's more of just a honey vin uh, honey yogurt. Great. Vinegar. Yeah, I mean, that's gonna go so well with all those fresh lettuces. Yeah, so that's a start there. So we'll clear all this off to the side. Oops. Thank you, Darren. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Now we're gonna start off with just a couple heads of lettuce and I thought I'd just go over how to clean a head of lettuce because most people have a problem. I always like to go around the outside, yeah. especially if it's been sitting near the fryer and there's a little bit of oil splatter. Just some of the outside leaves, just getting rid of. Yeah. I mean, some of them are good and I don't want to be wasteful. Lot, yeah, a lot of the, I find my dad worked in produce for uh, the whole time I was growing up and uh, that was one of those things every day or two, the secret. They would get these massive heads in, in the produce section of lettuce and then every day, he would go and take the outside leaves and then the beginning or the middle would look just fresh and vibrant, ready to go. And then the next day they'd pull it off. And then after a few days, you're down to just this narrow little. little I did, uh, I worked on a charter boat and yeah. one of that was one of the things that happened on there is that you would take the romaine heads of lettuce right. and we go out for two weeks. And after about a week and a half, I'd wrap them all in um, paper towel, paper towel and yeah. stick them upside down in right. the back of the boat. So the outside would actually rot. Right, but and it would you, keep the inside perfect. So we'd have beautiful romaine heart salads. Oh, that's great. And I do a grilled salad. So anyways, to get back to the lettuce. Yes. I'm definitely just gonna cut right down the center and just take out the core. Right, nobody wants to eat that. And that's basically gonna give you the best easy. And then I just like to s split them into about bite sized pieces. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing with lettuce. No one wants to have a over big chunk. No. So I like to keep them just a nice bite sized piece. Yeah. You've got that bowl there. I'll just yeah, add absolutely. these there. Yeah, a salad. You're not eating it with a knife and fork. You're eating it with a fork. So yeah. it needs to be ready to eat. That's, nice that's how pieces. I like to look at it. So just going to hit it there. Get rid of our core. Great. And it's just nice and simple. Perfect. Now, a lot of people also still believe in the, the fact of using not using a knife to do Right. Lettuce. My mom uh, was a big one on that. Everything it was always shredded. Always shredded. Yeah. And now one of the one of the things that I found is that it's because we use stainless steel knives right now. Yeah. It's the old steel knives that you used to use would actually leave a bit of a rust. So when you right. cut them through, get that oxidization. It would which oxidize we're not getting them. anymore. 
No, so it's definitely, anyway, so we've just got a nice artisan blend here. So I've just got a Perfect. different mix of different lettuces. So I'm just gonna add that in there. And we're just gonna give that a wash and a yep. quick spin. Great. So we got our lettuce done. Fantastic. I love a salad spinner. Just makes life so much easier. Oh, I know. Yeah, and it's so always amazing how much moisture of... actually comes off of it. I know, it's incredible. And that just takes away from everything. It yeah. also, you know, it does, water is probably the worst thing for vegetables because as soon as water hits vegetables, they start to rot. Right. And I always found that, that you always want to grab the stuff from the back of the grocery store, not the stuff that they missed all the time. Right. It's only got a day after that. Yeah. So we're just going to throw that to the side. I always like to throw some nice fresh herbs in there too. Yeah. A little punch? Actually, a little punch. You know, whatever we can throw in there. People just love to get a nice bite of some fresh, you know, mm -hmm. parsley, some fresh mint. Um, on the side, I'm just going to do here, I'm going to candy up some hazelnuts. Nice. Because I really like hazelnuts. Sure. So what I do you have in the love pan nuts. there so far? So right now, really, I've just got a little bit of water in the pan. Yeah. So it's quite simple. And I'm just going to really do a simple syrup. So I'm just going to be a little bit of sugar in there. Right. And we're just going to melt it right. with a little bit of the water and get it to dissolve. You don't want to do this too, you, I mean, you want to take your time, just let it nice and dissolve. Right. Kind of working it with a small amount in this pan, but we don't want to have too much. A lot of times too, what I'll do at work is I'll do a bigger batch of simple syrup and I'll throw my nuts in there yeah. and let them cook for a bit and let them actually soak it up. And then I'll break them out and uh, throw them into uh, Bake them in the oven. Oh yeah. Strain them and bake them in the oven. Nice. Yeah. Anyways, I think I'll just give a little bit of a chop to some of these. Sure. Just they're a bit big. This will just moisten them up. I'll throw this down there Thanks. so people can just actually see what I'm doing here. Just basically running a knife through a bunch of these nuts. Right, it might seem tedious, but it's just, it just takes you a minute. So oh, yeah. no time at all. Makes it look nice. Okay, so that's starting to come to a bit of a... Bit of a little simmer there. Yeah. And I'm just going to throw these in there. Right. And these are just going to coat in there. Lovely. So you're just getting them nice and coated. And little heat. A little heat. And then we're just like that. Nice and candied. Perfect. Now never touch that. No, that that's is hot. hot. Yes. Yeah, so just let it cool. And it's for a, a nasty bit. hot. It's a it's one of those ones that'll burn your skin for a while after. It keeps going. Sugar yep. is is deadly. Even as nice as it looks, especially yeah. when it starts going caramelized and you think, I'll just yeah. have a little taste of that. No. No, no those it's sugar a, burns are nasty. It's a bad idea. So I'm just going to throw these to the side. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what we could do? Add a little sugar here. Yeah. I'm just going to... Oh, I see. Get a little on the outside. Let them just sort of cool off on the outside. That shouldn't take that long to cool down. Right. And I will pass this to you. Thanks. Thanks. They cool down pretty quick. <clears throat> okay, so you've got your greens. We've got our greens. Candied some hazelnuts. I'm gonna, uh, I thought I'd get a couple little veggies in there. Sure. Uh, I thought, why not some uh, radish, right? Radish, yeah. Some nice little sharp flavor in there. Exactly. Goes well with that, uh, that nice, sweet, creamy dressing you've made. Nice thin slices of it. Mm -hmm. So that would be ex excellent to add to there. Thought I'd just a little bit of a presentation. I just like a little tomato. We're just gonna take out. Right. Take out the. I, know, I love the center of the tomato, but uh, in the salad, it's um, yeah. I find it's it's one of the few places where you where I actually like to remove it. Yeah, and so what I'll do is I'll just pull it to the side and I'll use it for a stock or right. something else. It, you don't have to waste it. Great for. S yeah, mm -hmm. that tomato flavor can be used anywhere else. Excellent. So we got a couple little garnishes there. And of course, I got some sprouts over there. Wonderful. Those pea, pea sprouts? Yes. Great. We got those from... Uh, from the market? From eat the local, more. Mo local market, local uh, sprout growers. Eat more sprouts. Um, we have uh, 
We're just going to add a little of our dressing in there. If you want to grab that nice round plate there. So That's another thing I find too, is that um, people seem to still go to the table uh, dressing salad. I find um, if I'm having people over, I always dress the salad. It's, uh, I, I just find it's that extra step, you know, where it just feels like a finished, presentable dish. Is there it is? It's dressed for you, uh, you know. And exactly. uh, then you can also play with presentation. You know? And that's what I like. And this is yeah. going to the plate. I mean, you can just put in a nice little scoop of lettuce. Mm -hmm. Nice mix there for everyone. Great. Perfect. Throw a couple sprouts on the top there, just to be fun. And this is where the fun part of this begins: is just getting that nice. Right. tomatoes on there. Wonderful. And to finish it off, let's see if we're still, it's probably a bit soon. I would do these normally a little bit earlier. So that sweetness, you just counter that little, the acid and the, the yogurt, make it nice and creamy. That looks fantastic. Perfect. And there we go. Great. And Tons of variations that are, you don't have to, I mean, you can play with what lettuces you want to use. You can play with the little garnishes. You can play with your vinaigrette. I mean, there's the basic building blocks of any salad. Right there. Great. Lots of ways to go. Great. Okay. First course down. One down, two to go. <laughs> We're going to start, I guess, with finishing off with the, the chocolate mousse. Fantastic. Definitely something you can do ahead of time, set up, set in the fridge. This is a super simple, easy chocolate mousse recipe. I'm going to do it the hard way, <laughs> uh, just in the studio, yeah. and to prove to everyone that I can actually whip whipping cream by hand, yeah. and it is possible. I, I know, it's, I, I do it, uh, I've done it before, and now I have a, a specifically a beater for it. But yes. There was a, about a year or two there where I didn't have a beater, and uh, the, kids, yeah, the kids didn't share, my, share that understanding of, well, we can't have whipped cream if there's no beater. They're like, you can still do it, Dad. But yeah, I had uh, there was a good year and a half there where I had to whip my own cream. I did it the other day <laughs> with two forks, actually three forks in my hand. Wow. Not this you're, much. You're taking it back to old school. I was trying to impress someone. Are you masochistic? Are a you little bit. Was, for punishment? Uh, I was in my new apartment and I didn't have a whisk at the time. <laughs> and I figured I could make dinner and I pulled it off, so. Wow. So whisking is, uh, yeah, it just, if you, you have to stick to it, uh, it takes a while, um, but all you're doing is thoroughly, thoroughly aerating that product to the, stiff, to the point where it stiffens. I, I, I believe there's probably more to the scientific principle of what's going on. There's I something know, else yeah. happening. <clears throat> but it's pretty, you're basically nailing it right yeah. there. You're just incorporating air into it and stiffening it. And now we want to get this to a night, like to a soft peak. And there's different right. stages. I mean, you can do, uh, you know, you, you want it to be able to hold its body together. Right. So I find when you get to that point, which we're probably a little ways away from right now, yeah. that the whipping cream will just, you can, it'll just start to curl over when you pull it out of the bowl. Yeah. And that's what you're looking for. I wonder if maybe, um, for those of you at home, if James maybe has some sort of uh, technique that we can just speed up the film here <laughs> to show that Johnny is in fact actually going to whip this, but also to not bore you to death with our witty banter while we're doing this. Yeah. Has anyone seen my apprentice? <laughs> well, now you see, I'm starting to get it there. Wow. And we're starting to see how the... So we got soft peaks. You want to, yeah, can you just show everybody a soft peak? It's just, oh, it's right. a little bit, this is a little bit stiffer than soft, but... Yeah. I may have gone past it, but that's right. what we're looking for. We're getting into stiff peak territory. Which is all right for what we're doing. Right. Uh, next project is we've got to get our chocolate melted down. So what we've done is we've set up a double broiler here. We've got a nice big pot, mm -hmm. which we're actually going to use for our pasta later. And we just thrown a frying pan on top and we're just going to melt the chocolate in there. Right. Now, definitely you don't want to get it over boiling. You just want to bring it up to a nice simmer. The hotter you get chocolate, the more you can lose the temper on it, right? So right. you want to keep it really, you're just looking for a body temperature okay. to melt it and make it nice and creamy. So that'll take a few minutes. Right. Uh, yeah, that'll just be a slow melt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we're seeing a, a fast melt, you're, you're over temperature, you're yeah. going too hot. You'll basically be able to see it. It's just starting to melt now. Okay. And then uh, our local eggs, farm fresh eggs, what are we doing with those? 
Uh, well, we're, it's pretty simple with those. Is we're gonna actually we're gonna keep one whole egg in okay. for this recipe. And it's quite a simple recipe, and then we're just gonna take the yolks from the other two. Okay. Now definitely, if you want to keep these whites for something else at home, make a nice little meringue. And a nice little meringue. They definitely hold in the freezer very well. Yeah. I'm just gonna get those two eggs out of there. Perfect. And leave them there. So. There we go. Okay. Put this off to the side. Now what we're gonna do is once the chocolate gets up to temperature, we're gonna whisk these eggs over the double broil to warm them up. Okay. And just so they start to get a little, you know, just a little consistency to them. Then we're gonna add our chocolate into the eggs and that's gonna allow them to melt properly together so it's not gonna ball up in lumps of chocolate. Right, right. And then so after we get to that which process. Which is a definite problem with this, something of this nature. <laughs> This is, is where we get into the science of it. Yeah, when you're taking something that's hot and adding it to something cold, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna congeal, it's gonna harden up on you. So that's what the process with this. So also a great point with the eggs, a lot of times I'm just doing a plain, plain chocolate mousse, but the you know the sky's the limit with this recipe. Right. You add a couple ounces of any liqueur that you like. Right, and this is where you would add it. You <clears> add it right into this. Right there. Uh, we do at our work, this is where we put our raspberry coulis in. Right. So we do a batch of raspberries in a simple syrup and we strain it strain out and then we add that add some of that to there then that gives us our essence of right. uh, of raspberry flavor in the chocolate great flight mishap here at studio live broke our uh, spatula um and we don't have a backup so we're going to be working through the rest of this with a broken spatula easy we can do this <laughs> not a problem all so, right. uh, so we got our whipping cream. I put a, pulled a little bit to the side just to have just as a finishing for this. Right. I think we got our chocolate just where we want it. Oh, it looks great. Just, just nice and soft. Now what I'm going to get you to do, Darren. Sure. Over the double broiler again, we're going to give this a whisk. <clears throat> and see if we can get it to just froth a little bit. Yep. And we're just trying to warm up those eggs, get them to that, you know, that nice body temperature. Right. But we gotta whisk them because uh, nobody wants scrambled eggs. Exactly, we're not trying to get scrambled eggs here, for sure. And definitely, add, I'll add a little bit of water to that sometimes, even a little cream just to, to make that, even though you don't want to add water to chocolate because it becomes very messy. Right. Let me think, you're getting close? Yeah. I think you can pull that out. Throw it right on there. And what we'll do is we'll start with a little bit of whisking here. So we're going to cover this all up. Now it'll start to thicken up quite a bit, but the egg's going to let it separate from the... Just going to bore that from you for a second. Yeah. Nice little scrape there. I'm going to scrape a little more. So definitely, if you're double broiler, it's a little easier when you've got a nice bowl that's round. But this will work. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Throw this off to the side. That nice sheen, that nice glossy look to this. Yeah, so we're going to pull that whisk out of there. Okay. Give that a nice... This is where the fun fact comes. <laughs> right, so the key here, well, I'm sure you can explain it better, but the folding. It's folding, because we don't want to, because our whipping cream is to that point that it's nice and thick. So we don't want to over whip it, and we don't want to break it, because right. it will separate and turn into a butter. Right. So what we're just going to do is slowly add it in there. Mm -hmm. And try and mix it as little as possible. <clears throat> While still mixing it. While still mixing it. And that's going to keep it a little thicker. Of course, it is going to, it is going to thin out quite a bit. Right. But try and do it as little as possible. But once we go back to the fridge and that chocolate sets up, it'll bring back some of that. It's a little bit easier with just a little bit more length. <laughs> yes. If only I had a longer spatula. If only I had a longer spatula, that's all right. Perfect. 
Mm, that's nice now. And I thought best way to do this, a couple of wine glasses just to finish off the meal. And I really can use any dish for this. I mean, right. I just happen to have some wine glasses and I like the wine glass look. Great. So now we'll just return those to the fridge. And uh, let them set for roughly how long? Uh, probably a good hour. They'll okay. be set up quite nice. Great. And chocolate mousse. All right. And then once you go to serve, then we'll take a little bit of whipping cream. Right. Just do a dollop on there, just to cream it out. And also, you know, you can add a little bit of a, if you're doing a berry one, add a little coolie to the top. Extra Perfect. flavor. All right, so let's, uh, let's put our finishing little stuff together here. Sure. It's, so uh, a couple of hours have passed. The stew has stewed. Stewed. Probably could go a little bit longer. Right. I mean, the longer it goes, the more tender the meat's going to be. Right. So, but we got it here. It's nice, nice and tender. So I'm going to thicken this and I was thinking, I didn't want to thicken it with flour. We're doing a pasta. I thought we'd cream it up a bit. And so right. I do, uh, I thought I would do it with a liaison, okay. which is just basically taking is egg yolks, using right. your egg yolks to thicken it. And now you're going to need something to thin down your egg yolks so they don't co uh, cook and, right. and scramble in there right away. So we're just going to add a bit of cream. So it's just going to cream up the whole dish. Nice. <clears throat> now I thought since we're using, a little pontissima pasta. Nice local pasta maker there. Yeah, and this has got, it's a beautiful paprika and oregano. So I thought this is, I've kept it pretty simple there. So the creamy, so you get a bit of that paprika flavor coming out of there. Nice. And fresh pasta is so simple to work with. I mean. Yeah, you only need a couple of minutes. It and basically, once it comes back up to a simmer, you're good to go. Yeah. I do find a lot of times with a bag like this, you want to break it up just a little bit. Right. And I'm not going to actually cook off all of this. Okay. I may save that for myself for home later. <laughs> so I'll just pass that to you on the side there, Darren. Thanks. Yeah, look at that. That looks fantastic. Yeah, so it's nice. It's dried a little bit. Just want to break it out. I find too, if you throw it in there, it clumps and you don't get right. that nice product. So just split it out. I've never believed in oil in my water. I know Neither it's I. a bit of wives tale on that, but I do believe in salt. And I think you need to season your water to have the flavor because that'll transfer right into your pasta. Right. Because if you throw it into unsalted water, all that flavor in the pasta is going to leach it's out. It's going to come up. You want to pop the lid there, Darren? Since we're at that point, we're just going to drop it in the water and I'll leave you, I leave the lid off. Okay. I don't need the lid anymore. Just give it a little stir. Okay. And once this pasta comes, we're going to be good. While we're doing that, I've got my my stew going there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to separate. We got something to put some eggs into. We'll do it here. Right. Just going to put a little egg yolk on the side. Just going to get rid of it down there. I'm going to do two egg yolks. It's probably more than I need for this. I just want to make sure we get it done right. Okay. Out there. Now, portion-wise, you know, you're, I'm really just going to add as much cream as there is egg. Okay. Give it a good whisk. That way this isn't going to scramble and we can cook it. I don't want this at too high a boil. Right. I'm going to add a little bit more cream. I'm going heavy cream too, so it even makes it easier. Pass you the whisk. And we're just going to slowly stir this in. Just like any thickening agent, you want to do it slow to temper it. Yeah, and that way it doesn't over thicken. Right. Wow, that's fantastic. And now this is going to be very delicate, so you don't want to bring this up to a boil ever again because okay. it'll, it'll definitely separate. Yeah, so I could have got, probably got away with one egg yolk in here just for the volume. Beautiful creaminess to it. 
once this comes up to a simmer again, it should be ready to go. And our pasta, how's that looking? Pasta's looking great. Just need a few more minutes, I would say. Maybe another two. And now we got a nice rich sauce. Right. Nicely balanced with our uh, vinaigrette <coughs> salad. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take it, I got some farmhouse cheese, so it's... I see that. The aged farmhouse natural pastures, so I thought I'd give that a little shot. We'll just do a little fresh grated on the top. Okay. Pass that over to you. Yep. Get rid of the bag. Thanks. Now definitely this is the time you want to just go and just check your seasonings, check your flavors. Right. This is just time. Just the last minute or two when you're finishing everything off. Might hit with just a little bit of salt. Of course, we we'll probably drop the pepper. And I think it's good right there. All right. I'm going to stop right there. Oh, we do have pepper there. Excellent. Thank you, Darren. Mm -hmm. Nothing like fresh cracked pepper. Now, since I got some parsley here, I thought I'd just get some fresh parsley on top of there. Right. And is this uh, butter? Butter, yeah. I was thinking we'll just throw a little bit of butter in the end there just to finish off. All right. Nice little chiffonade. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep it kind of coarse. Mm -hmm. so the past it'll blend in nice. Wonderful. Okay. Well, I think this past the. Let's bring really it out. Good. Give it a chance to sneak behind you. Should I just go straight to plating? Yeah, sure. Why don't we go straight to plate? Yeah, nice curl in the middle there. Yeah, I'll throw a touch of butter in here because we're just at that. I always like adding just a touch of butter, just to add that creamy, velvety, even though we got most of it there with the liaison. You figure that's enough pasta? Let me go just a little bit more. Okay. We got a hungry cameraman here. <laughs> hungry cameraman. Oh, beauty. Let's take a nice twist. Nice height. You got nice color in this paprika too. And we'll go right to our plate. Look at that. Wonderful. That's pretty much as local as you can get. And a perfect late February, early March meal. Mm -hmm. And we'll do a bit of cheese over the top. Oops. Half a block of cheese. <laughs> Pass that over to you. Thanks. And we'll finish. Nice fresh pasta. Amazing. And there we go. Looks fantastic. I think this is a, a nice three course meal. Let's, fantastic, yeah. Let's grab the other, the other ones and we'll... Look at this fantastic meal that you're, for, you're providing for us. What, I'm what, what, do we, what do we do then? Let's recap. Recap right from the stop. So we have our uh, artisan greens in a yogurt uh, vinaigrette with candied hazelnuts and a little bit of radish and tomato slivers. Uh, we have our Pontissima pasta, paprika and oregano right. linguine uh, with the island bison uh, braised, uh, what are we going to call it? Stew. Yes. Liaison. Right. Uh, with a little of the, the aged farmhouse uh, from Natural Pastures. And then we finished off with a little bit of chocolate mousse. Yeah, great. I mean, fantastic what we can come up with, with uh, just sourcing out everything from local farmers and producers mm -hmm. and uh, eating in the season, local food. Uh, it's just fantastic. So um, this, is for, um, this is our March, and uh, we want you to come back and see what we have for you next month in April. And uh, yeah. Yeah, if you have any, anything you'd like to see or, or uh, any questions or some different products you'd like to see on, definitely email us at uh, 
edible or yeah, edible valley at gmail.com. Right. Um, or contact us through Facebook, like us on Facebook. You can find our podcast there at, at, at um, just search for edible valley. And uh, I think that's about. And the, of course, there's always our podcast where we get to talk right. to some of the local farmers. So you yeah. can check us out at edibleValley.com. Great. And um, we hope to see you again. And let us know what you think of what we're doing. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm.